B-Pod Studios. What's up, headlines? The Celtics' big winners over Golden State yesterday at the Garden, 140 to 88. It was Jason Tatum's 26th birthday. He had 27 points, but the other J, Jalen Brown, with a big game, 29 points, including 19 in the first quarter. It was their third largest winning margin in franchise history. They led by 44 points at halftime. They'll now take on the second place team. Cleveland on Tuesday night. Bruins, they're back in action tonight. They lost to the Islanders over the weekend. They're in Toronto tonight. No word yet if Pavel Zaka will play tonight. His status is unknown. All the coverage here on the Sports Hub begins at 6.30 with the puck drop at 7 p.m. And while baseball spring training continues, Red Sox second baseman Vaughn Grissom, he's dealing with a groin injury and opening day is in doubt. The Sox will take on Detroit today with Josh Winkowski on the mound. Headlines, they are brought to you by Bentley University, a force for business, a force for good. I'm Joe Murray. Your next update is in 30 minutes. No matter where you go, you're always connected to Boston sports with the 98.5 The Sports Hub app. Download it wherever you get your apps today. On the air. Online. On the air. This is how Boston sports fans start their day. Toucher and Hardy on 98.5 The Sports Hub. No Fred Toucher this week on Toucher and Hardy, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. You like how you hit the post on those, Dan? I do that on purpose, you know? That's for you, top 40 shorts. It's been in there a while. You, you, you have plenty of time to <laughs> hit that post with practice. Happy fourth anniversary to this uh, music band. <laughs> He's on fire got... this morning, man. <laughs> He's just burying everything. We didn't play this one on the midday show. Oh, someone skipped over it? I don't know. Maybe what? that's why we played it so much. Why don't you change him out? Get right on that. I'll do it. There's no stopping him this I morning. Smash. I tell you, he is something else, isn't he? Uh, you all right? Uh, me? I'm good, John. No, yes. I'm looking at Dan. I'm Dan, good. you okay? I'm good, yep. All right. <laughs> Jesus. It's the other thing I found with this, uh, with this uh, time change in my life. I find myself caring so much less about certain things. I'm like, you know what? I'm just numb. It's almost almost like a drugged feeling when you're this tired all the time. Like, ah, Dan's got something going on with the music beds in his own world right now. I don't know, but I can't care about that. I I liked how you hit the post. There is a post there. There was a little bit of a... Thank you. All right. uh, The Dynasty. Apple TV. You been watching this, Wallach? Religiously. All right. Uh, Joe not, even, not even messing around. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I've seen the whole thing. Saturday Saturday morning. We talked about this before it dropped, you know, when it was announced and uh, and how it was going to be on. And, and Fred said something, you know, to the effect of, who's going to watch this? And I said, everybody. <laughs> Every, everyone who's a Patriots fan is going to watch this. You know, I, I, I don't know how you don't accept that. Or understand that, and sure enough, everybody is watching this. And episodes five and six dropped on Friday. Uh, the first one is called "Torn," which is a uh, reference to uh, Tom Brady and the way the 2009 season started. And um, it, you know, you get into the the very brief, uh, you know, Matt Castle portion of the the documentary, and uh, when Castle takes over at quarterback. As a coach, I think you always want to try to play into the strength of your players, not have a system and force the players to play the system. In Matt Castle's case, he had a lot of talent, he was smart, and was very athletic. So we tried to tailor our offense to Matt's strengths and, and his confidence. Third down and three, Patriots have all 41. Matthew Castle steps up, he's going to run for the first down to the 50-yard line, stands in his feet to the right. Running the ball was a big part of my game. That's one element of the offense that I can honestly say Brady could never run the ball. But I was a little bit quicker, and Belichick recognized it. He changed our offensive scheme perfectly. Here's Castle. He's going to run it again. He's had success. And look at 
Wow, you got a dog now. <laughs> Aaron Randy Moss talking about Matt Castle being a gazelle. Yeah. Used to have a molasses coming out of there. So I, I thought it was good to include this stuff and Castle getting his time being like, yeah, Brady could never run like that. I could run. Yeah, they, when you think about the whole, the totality of the dynasty, the Castle chapter kind of gets skipped over. So it was nice to give him, you know what, Matt? Come on and sit down. Let's talk about this because what the Patriots did while Brady missed an entire year, I mean, they didn't make the playoffs, so no one remembers it, but 11-5 and five without Brady is remarkable. Did they mention that in the doc? Because they didn't. They said they won 11 games, never mentioned not making the playoffs once. For only One of the only teams ever to do so, right? Uh, to win 11 games? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. There's yeah. some things missing in the doc, but this one overall, though, this is a. This one makes Bill look good. Um, you know, there there was talks about you know, hey, is it really about Belichick or was it about Brady? And if you want to look at it in hindsight, I think that's what motivated Tom Brady more than anything else is the fact that he was coming off the injury, he had the infection, Castle played well, Belichick could put really anybody at quarterback and win games, and that motivated Tom Brady, and it kind of built Bill Belichick up. In this episode. In this episode, Because yes. then you know what's going to happen next. Well, They're going to absolutely <laughs> crucify him, yes. They're go- yeah, and we'll, we'll get to that. There's a lot on that. But the very beginning of that, when Bill talks about, you know, what he does with a football team and a quarterback. As a coach, I think you always want to try to play into the strength of your players, not have a system and force the players to play the system. Which gets glossed over a lot. People think of you know, coming into the Patriots. And we've seen it with with receivers for sure. Uh, you know, they come in, and whether it was uh, Ocho Cinco not able to run the offense, he couldn't pick it up. That was because it was established and run by McDaniels and Brady for Brady. But it wasn't like they had this offense and they made Tom Brady do it. And Josh McDaniels has said this. I don't know that I've heard Bill say it more than once before this, but I was glad to hear him say it again in the documentary because, again, as long as we're propping up Belichick here, might as well continue to do so by eliminating the narrative that there is a system that all players have to adhere to. That's not the case, especially at the quarterback position. You see what your quarterback is capable of, and then you game plan accordingly, and you come up with an offense that your quarterback can do. He's not... He's not some monster that says, no, it has to be done this way, and if you're not a running quarterback, you better learn how to run. You saw it. Brady ran it for so long, but then you have the Castle example and the fact that they were actually functional with Cam Newton as a quarterback should tell you that Josh McDaniels was very easily, very easily was able to adapt to the strengths of the quarterback. Yeah, and and believe me, we, we may not have thought of it as functional, especially in the immediate contrast to what Tom Brady had been able to to do here. But in hindsight, seeing what happened uh, with with Mac Jones, especially this last season, yeah, that uh, at least the beginning of of the Cam Newton era here did look somewhat functional. If you're out there winning six, seven, what did they end up with, seven wins that season with Cam Newton? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's remarkable. Yeah, they lost on a goal line on one of them. They missed yes. on a couple of here. The fumble, and there. The fumble Seattle the game, Harry on the fourth game, down the bad drop. turnovers. It yeah. was a sneaky, functional offense yep. at times. So yep. yeah, give them give them the the credit for that. The the part where Brady comes back, and again, this is all in episode five, and he returns for the 2009 season, and he takes the field almost exactly one month after the Sports Hub launched. In August of uh, 2009, Brady is back on the field uh, at Gillette Stadium, September 2009, and uh, that they, they talk about his first game back. And some of the, the this has a couple of my favorite quotes, uh, favorite sound bites in Patriots history in this in this one clip. Brady, oh, look, settle down, now, buddy. Step into the throw, okay. You're going right in the hands. Throw to Kevin out here? That drilled when I threw it. Did you get hit on yeah, that? Yeah, he was blitzing. I tried to flop it over him. This guy was standing right in, the, right in his face. Like the one to Maroney? 
over his hands. <laughs> no, actually, it was over his head. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> oh, that one. <laughs> yeah. Over his head. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, that gate key. <laughs> <laughs> I n- I never get tired of hit him in the hands. Oh, yeah. and oh, that yeah, one. he was blitzing. I tried to flop it over him. This guy was standing right in, the, right in his face. Like the one that Maroney? It was right in his hands. It was over his head. Oh, that one. Yeah. Just, you know, just step into it, okay? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So. I, I just real quick, like, I know you're trying <laughs> to say that they were a functional offense. I just want to be. Just consistent that that team was loaded and built for Tom Brady. So Matt Castle should have been cut in the preseason that year. They kept him around. And so I do give Bill credit for it, but they were loaded. Wes Welker, Randy Moss, that team was built to go to another uh, another Super Bowl. And the fact that they didn't make the playoffs, even without Brady. Uh, the one thing about that one, though, Brady tried to come back. That Monday. That's the practice. thing that I don't think anybody knew. He was throwing balls. He had pads on. He was at practice the next day. <laughs> Wanted to go play. He actually said during the documentary, I'll, just give me a knee brace. Tape it up. I'll go out and play. And, and, they, and do it. they have surgery after the season. I wonder whose decision that truly was. Uh, you know, was it craft because of the investment? Is it, hey, man, we're just going to try to win without you. Go get fixed. I thought, well... It's it's Brady saying, "Give me a knee brace. I'll go play fifteen more games with you know a shredded knee." And then there is every doctor in the world and every trainer and say, "Okay, yeah, you could do it. You know, if you were a caveman and you blew out your knee, yes, you could still go out and hunt. But it is a horrifically bad idea, and there's a really good chance that." you will damage this beyond belief. So, no, that's not – I don't think there was any planet where that would have happened. Brady says he wanted to, but, yeah, there's you know there's a lot of things that players want that would just never happen. I don't think that would ever happen. And there was another part of the story that Tommy Curran got a lot of flack for. Tom, Tom had a story that Brady's knee got infected afterwards and his you know future was up in the air, and – I remember he took a lot of crap for that, but it turns out Tom was absolutely right. And that they go into it, the documentary where the infection was really bad and they had to go in there and clean it out again before he could go play. And so 2010 was a je- uh, 2009 was in jeopardy yeah. because of that. All right. There was one other clip here I want to get to real quick before we break. And that is one of my other things I go back to. And I remember this vividly from 2009 and how, uh, just mind boggling it was that Bill Belichick, this, you know, this leader of men, this guy that was able to coach and, and had done what he had done with Matt Castle the previous season is standing on the sidelines with Brady last game of the season. We just have no mental toughness. I just can't get this team to play the way we need to play. I just um, can't do it. So frustrating. Yeah. Guys like Tom Brady got it. But Brady, no, he can't do it all. And that was when he was standing there with Brady saying, just shaking his head. It's like, I can't get these guys to play for me. I can't get them to, I can't get them to do it. And it, it shows you some fallibility there. You know, it, 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 you've got Brady, you've got some other guys, and they spent a lot of time talking about the players who had left at that point. You know, Brewski, you know, was gone at that point. Yeah, Vrabel, uh, uh, Vrabel gone at that point. So you got a bunch of guys in there who just aren't on board with, with you know, what's being done, how it's being done, and it shows you that, as, you know, as good as Belichick was at coaching and getting things together, he wasn't reaching players, and this is... Back in 2009, he just, I couldn't get him to play for me. All right, uh, when we come back, tiny bit of fun, just a tiny bit of fun, which has water thrown all over it at the beginning of episode six and the rest of that episode. Very, very dark, and it's got Wallach very, very upset. So we will uh, continue with that. Uh, Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. (laughs) 
Wondering who made our list of the top five all-time queens of country music? Did Carrie Underwood make the cut? Find out now when you text Queens to 45911 and scroll through the list on BackstageCountry.com. Text Queens to 45911 to see the talented artists who rounded out our top five list. We're on Toucher and Hardy. Stay with us. Toucher, Toucher, Hardy, Hardy. You see, you get used to sitting back and letting Daddy drive the car. 98.5 The Sports Hub. Toucher and Hardy. Joe Murray is here. We are happy to have him. Uh, you can join us too at any point. 617-790-985. Um, let's get back into the, uh, the dynasty documentary here. Um, and we find out here as, as we're getting ready to go into episode six, it's going to be about the draft. It's going to be about the tight ends. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, you know, some Gronkowski Hernandez stuff. The entire episode ends up being about Hernandez. There is a little Gronkowski portion at the beginning of it, though. When I was drafted to the Patriots, it was a proud moment. My family came on stage as well. We got in a huddle. We were doing hoo, 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 hoo in the huddle, jumping up and down. And then all of a sudden, I get a phone call from the Patriots. Hi, Rob. And they said, hey, Rob, like, you can get off the stage now. Like, enough is enough. And I'm sitting there like, wow, I'm already in trouble. It's been five minutes since I've been on the Patriots, and I'm already in trouble. I can picture Bill in that draft room just being like, why the f*** did we just draft this kid? Oh, look at this. Lord have mercy <laughs> Uh, I said, mercy, uh, have mercy on us. As Now, <laughs> it wasn't just the jumping around with his family celebrating. It was when they were there in their suits and they put the helmets on and oh, then started yeah, doing Oklahoma. That was, well. that was awesome. <laughs> I actually don't even remember that happening. But I watched it real time. I'm like, Jesus, this is going to be fun. And you <laughs> yes. know what else? I, I have to give Mike Lockhart, our draft analyst, credit. He said the next day that we came in, you'll be really happy that the Patriots drafted this kid. So I, I, it was all good but news. They, but they needed to go with at the time as with what the documentary entails is they needed to like get talent, like find actual guys who teams can game plan for, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And he was definitely one of them. Right. So he had fallen on the draft board a little bit, um, and he had the back. Correct injury. me if I'm he wrong. Actually it barely was, played. It was the it was back the back injury, issues yeah. at Arizona that forced him to fall a little bit. Hernandez had fallen. Uh, because of off field issues. And this is what I think sticks in Wallach's craw or caca mm-hmm. is that there is um, a lot of assigning of blame in this episode, starting first with not Bill Belichick, but Urban Meyer, the head coach of the Florida Gators, came to the principal of Aaron's high school and said, we want him to leave, come to Florida. Aaron arrives in Florida, barely 17 years old, still troubled beyond anyone's belief. During that time, he's in a bar, and there's a dispute over a $12 tab in the bar. Hernandez got into a fight with the bar manager. He punched the manager so hard, his eardrum burst. But at Florida, they had a fixer for the players when they get in trouble. And that lawyer was there for Aaron, and everything went away. So he comes away from the bar incident, and he learns very early in his career about what Football Inc. is, and that is that you can get in trouble and not get in trouble. So early on in the episode, they're laying out two things. Hernandez, troubled from an early age. He's he's got troubles where he lives. Goes down to Florida, Finds out if you get in trouble, can all be fixed because of football. So number one, yes, blame Aaron Hernandez for Aaron Hernandez. Number two, also blame Urban Meyer. That's how this is setting up right now. Mm-hmm. And, and ultimately, and I know we're going to get to it, it's blame Bill Belichick. That's where that's where all the blame was dumped as we moved along. I mean, the episode's only forty minutes, but 
easily half of that is Robert Kraft apologizing for being mm-hmm. duped by Aaron Hernandez and then the filmmakers going out of their way to make sure that everyone understands that Bill ignored Aaron Hernandez's weirder traits to keep him on the field, wanted Aaron Hernandez on the team even after his arrest, and you know held a press conference where he was terse with the media, but they didn't show all of it. I just had I had a big problem with that, and I don't know what you, what you no, have. No, we got a there. bunch of that. So I just yeah. wanted yeah, to say to Bob Holer is the one who I believe. Oh, uh, he yeah, let yeah. he <laughs> let the he left the murder at the team's feet. He's like, if the Patriots had just caught him, Odin Lloyd would still be well, alive. So, oh my God! As as we're getting into it, and as far as we know, Hernandez hasn't done anything yet. Other than, you know, gotten in a fight with the bar manager and at this point also probably shot his friend in the face down in Florida and done a bunch of other stuff that got swept under the rug. He's already into all kinds of bad stuff when he gets to the Patriots. And I I always goof on Jim Louth for this. Jim Louth always says he would love to be in the Patriots war room on draft day. To me, that seems like a big snooze fest. If you could get me into one of these rooms on one of these days, I would love to be in and sit in on some of these rookie symposiums where they bring guys up to talk to the new players. Zoe has talked about it before, how they get somebody up there to say, like, look, uh, I know you got money now and you think you need to buy a car or you need to buy a new house for your mom and dad. That's all very admirable. What you need to do is max out your 401k because we're going to double it. The the NFL has this insane 401k. It's like a two to one match. Wow! Jesus, right? Really? Oh yeah! It's oh like back God. in the day, if you put in fourteen grand, they would put in like an additional twenty eight. Oh, that's like awesome. it was just it was it's something, maybe one and a half or something like that. Still, but it, no, it's not a five percent match. No, it's like they will double whatever you say, fifty percent minimum, Jesus. right? God. And you know, tell you you have to do this. And I said to someone, so I'm like, how many guys did he? He goes, oh. Pfft practically none, maybe a quarter of them, because everybody gets these checks and they just want to, you know, start, you know, spending money all the time. But Chris Carter is up there talking to these guys. And to me, this is remarkable. I hadn't seen this before. When Chris Carter is up there speaking in the room and Aaron Hernandez asks yeah, it was, it the was question. was eerie, yeah. And if you think having money going to change you in a positive way, you show sure enough fooling yourself. If you like to smoke dope now, you like Kush now, you're going to be buying up all the Kush they got. If you would... <laughs> and it's Hernandez who is laughing and, like, grabbing the people around him and, like, ah. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all want me to lie to y'all like the rest of them do when they come in here. First question. I was just wondering, what changes did you make from when you got cut to when you went to Minnesota? Oh. That is Aaron Hernandez asking the question. Oh, man, you got to get your stuff together, man. You got to stop lying to yourself. I I stopped smoking that dope, stopped doing all the things I was doing, and I started getting my body in shape, and I started being able to run all day. And I told my old friends, don't call me. Now, this should be, this should be right now the fork in the road for a lot of y'all, man, to get y'all stuff together before you get popped, because you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. I mean, you want to talk about Jeez. foreshadowing. Yeah. Holy crap. That's literally what Aaron Hernandez did. Aaron it's, Hernandez smiled, too, and sat down. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, okay. Literally smoked angel dust and hung out with all his bad friends. And I mean, it was all laid things. out there in front of him. Now, it, it does it make it more tragic? Yeah, for Odin Lloyd and... Other people, whether whether you know the you know they they say at the end of the documentary of stuff that he was acquitted on, and look, there's all kinds of weird stuff with he was appealing one of the murder convictions, uh, or uh, or the, I, I one of his convictions, I guess. So technically, if you die while the case is on appeal, um, you're innocent. You're you know you are not guilty. So yeah. there's uh, there are some technicalities there, but suffice it to say, Hernandez did all kinds of bad stuff. And it was laid out in front of him like, this is what's going to happen if you do this. And he did it anyway, and it happened. Yep. Um, now, you want to get to the the Belichick stuff? Where sure. They start, he starts uh, do, do, we have, do you want to break now, or do you want to keep going? I'm, gonna, I, I'm ready. So whatever you want to do. I, I, I think it's good getting into this because I, I hope people understand, like, Aaron Hernandez was one of their best offensive players at the time. 
And he was part of an entire new offense. Now people run two tight end but, schemes. The Patriots were the first team to do that. I just look back. I, I can't even compare the player that Aaron Hernandez was to somebody else. Like, I don't even know if there's a comp. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I, and, and I say that on the football field. I don't even know if there was a comp out there yeah. for the way that he could change a game. I know it's 15 so, years ago. So because it, because I, I know what you're saying, Joe. It was because of the position he, he played, but the speed with mm. which he played. Yeah. Played more like a wide receiver, but played as a tight end, and it was... Uh, it, it was remarkable, and, and I but, get he had off field stuff, but like even the thought of a trade or anything like that, I, I there's a lot we'll get into about okay. it, but I just can't imagine they ever thought of it. Okay, you tell me Belichick isn't thinking about it though a little bit, or I I don't I, but there's I don't, no evidence of that. Okay, I don't know what to I don't know what to make of this exchange between Kraft and Belichick. This is the only one I want to play, and then we'll we'll take a quick break here. And then we'll get to the other stuff. But this. And I was most impressed with Hernandez, how he came in today. I think he's got such a good heart. He's a good guy. Hmm. Okay. Belichick says, hmm. Belichick knew. He knew at that point. I don't think he's completely sold on Hernandez even even the player, because he's got so many questions about him character-wise. And we know that, you know, the Patriots and the Crafts, they've got a lot to do with the production of this documentary. I think it's twofold. Number one, yeah, there's blame being placed at the feet of Urban Meyer and Bill Belichick. But Robert Kraft is exposing himself as being, like, really fallible here and really gullible. To include this part where he's on the he's on the training camp field talking to Belichick saying, I'm so impressed with Aaron Hernandez. He's just got such a good heart. He's just such a good guy, Belichick. Now, is Belichick just ignoring Robert like it seems like he did for years and years here? Mm. Not even listening to him? Or is he thinking to himself, man, you don't know this guy at all? He told me, told me we had to be careful with the people around him. He recognized him. So he's coming to so much more. He's got to be careful with the people around him. He's coming to so much money. And Belichick just says nothing. Like, he he knew. He knew. And Robert is... <laughs> if you need more evidence that he was completely duped by the guy than, than that, I, I don't know what no, to he, tell you. He, At Rob, that point, he, is, he has no clue what this guy Robert is Robert Kraft about. falls on his sword in this episode where he's like, you know what, I look at people differently now, specifically because of the way I was, and his words, not mine, snookered by the yeah. by Aaron Hernandez. And he goes uh, uh, extensively by himself looking at the camera and apologizing for his actions. No, he, Robert Kraft, throws himself at the mercy of uh, fandom in this one. I know you have more to say on this, too, yes. Joe, but we'll, go, we'll get to it after the headlines here. Uh, stay with us, and then... We have more tickets that we're giving away at the end of the hour, right? We got the Bruins tickets for the Oilers game. So, BackstageCountry.com, your online home for all things country music. <laughs> Lainey Wilson is on a roll. She's delivering great music and teaming up with some of country's hottest acts. Text Lainey to 45911 to see which four Lainey Wilson collabs have us talking at BackstageCountry.com. Text Lainey to 45911 to get a link to the list sent right to your phone from BackstageCountry.com. Stay with us for that. That's coming up at 7.50. It's called Rising and Grinding. Well, Start your day. That's your finger on the pulse, Fred. Seldom right and never wrong. Right here. Oh. I know, looks like a poodle. It's an effing poodle, dumbass. <laughs> the Sports Hub. This hour of Toucher and Hardy brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel. And be listening at 7.50 this morning for your chance to score a pair of tickets to be at TD Garden tomorrow night. The Boston Bruins face off against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. 7.30, puck drop. Still time to secure your spot. So that'll be happening at uh, 7.50. I made the mistake just now of 
explaining to Joe Murray how to order Town Spa Pizza, and he just held his hand up. He's like, "I, I know, I got, I, I, I got this." All you right. tried to learn Joe about a restaurant? No, I just in said- Massachusetts. What a <laughs> catastrophic error that is on your part. We should quite, we should quiz him about no. menu items on in restaurants like region wide. No, I'll give you he'd credit. Ace it. I'll give you credit on this one for those who may not go to the bar pizza scene. Um, sometimes you have to order it a little bit well done because it, it's the way that they put it in that pan, you know? So if you put it in there, I also did well done at Pleasant Cafe and Rossi too. Oh, um, that's interesting. Extra crispy. Now, the the problem is when you start getting a little too finicky with your order at Pleasant Cafe, they might throw your dumb ass might. out onto Washington they Street might. and say, you know what? <laughs> Kick rocks. Go up the Knicks up the street. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you uh, go down to Romano's or something yeah. where they might have time for your nonsense? Because as you can see, uh, we're packed in here and we don't have time for your foolishness at Pleasant Cafe. But uh, good for you. Um, so let's get, let's get back to the uh, the dynasty stuff here as we get more into the the story of Aaron Hernandez. We listened to what Chris Carter had to say at the rookie symposium about, you know, getting away from your old friends and uh, not messing with that stuff anymore. We heard Bob Kraft uh, talking with Bill Belichick saying like, he's, he's a good kid. He knows that he has to separate himself from those people now, but there is something inherently wrong with Aaron Hernandez. And uh, it was, um, um, I'm blanking now. It was Wes Welker uh, who went up to another uh, player who had his locker in between the two of them. Brandon Lloyd. Brandon yeah. Lloyd, yeah. thank you. Uh, Wes Welker is, talks to Brandon Lloyd and kind of gives him a warning. So I think we hear Brandon Lloyd speaking first in this. During training camp, Wes Welker makes his beeline over to me and I grabs me like, by the shoulders. He says, Brandon, your locker's in between Gronk and Aaron Hernandez. Now, Aaron, he's going to fondle his genitalia in front of you. He's going to talk about bathing with his mom. What? 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 Yeah. He Welker's locker, by the way, was on the other side of Hernandez, so he knew exactly what yeah. was going in on. In the 30 for 30 documentary, um, they entailed some things regarding Hernandez and his home life. Okay. Was bad. All right. <clears throat> All right. You just got to ignore it. You got to ignore it. It was like Wes has seen a ghost the way he was looking at me. You know, I thought Aaron was a good kid. I had a locker right next to him, tried to help him, tried talking to him. But at the same time, I don't know. It was, uh, I think it was pretty glaring um, that there were issues. There's a story, too, about Welker that uh, either Zoe told me or maybe Beetle told me, and, and, and maybe it's in one of those earlier docs, too, that you just mentioned, Joe, where Welker was in the facility early on in Hernandez's time, and Hernandez said something about, you know, how do you how do you go to the film room? It's like, where do you, you know, where do you go to look at this tape I'm supposed to look at? And Welker said something just kind of like a like a hazing thing. It's like, oh, figure it, you know, figure it out, rookie. Yeah. You know, something like that. And Hernandez lost his mind. Yeah, I, I heard this story too. Like what you wanted that. wanted yeah. to fight him right then and there. It's like whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Yeah. All right. Did so he, get, he also got into it. Maybe Tom Brady. If I don't know if you're getting there, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, no, I I didn't have that. There was there was the 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 part where he would be on the field as they're trying to run offense and Hernandez is, is out. He's got, you know, maintenance. He's not practicing that day, but he's tossing the ball up on the sideline. He's out there in flip flops and Brady tells him to get the F off the field. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And then you have to cut it back to Lloyd and Welker saying, yeah, you know, Aaron would act out and Brady would tell him to get the F off the field. And we'd look at bill and waiting for bill to do something. And bill didn't do anything. Nothing. And that was the beginning of what I didn't like about this, which was this is just the first step in Bill should have been better. Bill was awful at this period of time when handling Aaron Hernandez. And I don't know how many clips you have left there. I but, got two left. Okay. About, okay, so here's one of them, though, Wallach. And I, and I understand what you're saying. You can't blame one guy for this. You can only blame Aaron Hernandez but they do for this. go out of their way to make Bill look bad. Okay, what do you yeah. make of this? 
Aaron told him that his girlfriend and his daughter's safety was in jeopardy. Belichick asked Hernandez if he wanted help from the security department of the Patriots, and Hernandez said, no, thank you. Instead, he asked Bill Belichick to trade him to a team on the West Coast so he could get away from New England, just get away. But Belichick said no to Aaron Hernandez. At the 2013 Combine, Aaron Hernandez asked to be traded to a West Coast team, saying that he feared for his family's lives. What did you do with that information? Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation about Aaron, and I don't have anything to add to it. All right, so Bill being typically reticent, and he's not going to say anything, but I don't expect you to... to honor every trade request that a player makes of you, especially a player that's important to your football team as Aaron Hernandez was. Having said that, this isn't, I don't like it here. You know, I want to leave. This is a, a guy who is life is spiraling out of control. He's fearing for his own life. He's maybe committed murders already at this point. Not that Bill necessarily knows that, but this is something that goes beyond the, the normal trade request. And Bill says, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. You, know, you, know, you, want, you want to help from uh, you know, one of our security guards here? Bang up job so far, by the way. You know, the, the, this whole notion that the Patriot way is going to fix everybody and that they know what everyone is up to down there. No, they don't. Not, not when you got a monster in your midst. So, there's, so he does nothing? He did nothing. I'm not saying that he was right in his assumption. What I am saying is you put one of those things in or another one of those things, but there are four or five things in a row that this documentary goes out of its way to spotlight to make Bill look terrible. Now, the decision-making he made, ex- exceptionally regrettable. I mean, it, there was, you know, the day he got arrested, you know, they they show the whole thing of the the reporters following Aaron Hernandez to the gas station. We were all oh my god, that we're day. all we're all watching we're, we're it. They're driving it past my kids' real daycare, time, and then he dashes into the facility to try and get away. And the Patriots see what's going on; they kick him back out, whatever the case may be. And they cut to a clip of Jonathan Kraft saying, "You know, here, Dad and I. At oh, that you have there. My dad and Bill were both out of the country, but I felt strongly we couldn't wait." And so I called my dad, and he very much agreed, and we called Bill. And, you know, Bill, as is his want, was always more measured. In the beginning, he said, you know, he's not guilty yet. And there there were competitive issues, too. He didn't want to have to lose. An amazing football player. So Bill's instinct would be play this thing out till the end. And I just knew we couldn't play it out to the end. And and not... Not because of how it looked on us, but because we had to set a f***ing example. I mean, like, it's like this guy's a murderer. So you had that. You had Bill, you know, rejecting the request of Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, and that happened at the you combine, had, yeah, just to and, let everyone and, know. And, he did, they did meet there. You, you, wanted, you had Bill obviously making the wrong decision there, and the crafts are like, well, we wanted to cut him immediately, but Bill, Bill wanted to hang on to a murderer. You know, there, there are, you've driven the point home. We get it. He wasn't a good guy here. He made a, a series of bad mistakes. And then they cut to a clip of the press conference that he held shortly afterwards where oh. they questioned him and Bill was like, I'm not talking I'm about not that. I'm not talking about but it. But at the same time, I, was, I remember watching that press conference and thinking, okay, you know, there have been a lot of mistakes made here. And Bill was actually more human at that press conference and I can never remember him. They don't show that. And then you juxtapose Bill doing that with Robert Kraft at the end of the episode saying, you know what? We wanted to be a valuable part of the community. We failed here. It, it, it just seems to me like there were, you put one or two of those things in, but you put four of those things in a row. He was a bad guy. No, no, no. He was a really bad guy. But in case you missed it, he's a terrible guy. Well, Kraft also went on to say that he did ask Aaron, hey, if you did this, or you must have had a reason, and I can get you the best defense attorney yeah. if you need it. Like that, that was also mentioned, so it made Bill look really bad. Really bad. But there's, there's a difference, John, between saying someone is a bad guy and having, you know, zero, 
connection to the situation where you can't see that somebody is uh, literally out there killing people and still wanting to hang on and not cut the guy and keep him on the team and won't consider a trade request. But it, it's a- not just that. It's They w- went out of their way to show his reaction to it. They went out of their way. You juxtapose Bill Belichick's press conference where he goes, I'm not talking about that, to Robert Kraft giving a heartfelt apology at the end. And it just seems like... Okay, what about the documentary where Bill still won't talk about it? Now's the time to come clean with it and say all the stuff that maybe you could have said before. And I do remember him saying more at that initial press conference. But I think you're giving him too much credit. I really think you're giving Bill too much credit on this one. And look, the crafts don't look great in this either. Robert got completely hoodwinked by this guy. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, Jonathan's saying at the end, like, we got to make an effing example out of him. He's a murderer. Nobody, I, nobody thought Bill, it was the wrong move to cut him when they did. Bill went over the top. Bill was wrong on so many levels with this guy. This guy was a murderer on his football team. And he made a lot of mistakes not trading him when Hernandez comes up to it says my family is in danger i need to get out of here or at least, it's ju- or at least trying to do something more to it get just wait a second what's going on here just I, i'm not going to gonna trade you but let's let's really figure out what's going on the here. documentary went over the top above and beyond to make sure that they understood that everyone watching understood that the crafts were making themselves vulnerable and bill is a dick that's what it seemed like i was just going to mention that bill was still under contract with the team when they filmed this documentary, therefore, he treated everything like he was still the coach of the team. If this happened after, I wonder if he, he would have, would have said, said something more. different. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, the, the other thing that just struck me, though, is that Robert talking about going down into the weight room. That day when we were all watching Hernandez leave his house, show up at Gillette, go into the facility, and you're thinking there had to have been security waiting there for him saying like, uh, you can't be here. Get the hell out. Not only was he there, he went into the weight room. Robert goes downstairs and goes into the weight room with him and talks to him. Like, uh, you, you went, you actually went and addressed him at that point. Did you do this? No, I'll help you. Yeah. I'll get you the best. Of, that, that's not a great look either. No, I'll help not. you get it. I'm what? sure you didn't mean it. How can you be so sure? He thought he knew him. At he, this that, point, at, he thought he knew. At, him at this that point, point, he needed to realize he had no idea what was going on well, with this I, guy. And I think Bill had more of an idea. I think Bill had more of an idea. It's certainly possible. That is not detailed in the documentary at all. All right, let's. Um, and not that Bill knew that he was out there murdering people, but he knew he was in trouble. He knew about the flop house. He knew about a lot of some other things. All right, uh, this is your chance to win tickets uh, to be at TD Garden tomorrow night for the Boston Bruins facing off against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers at 7.30. Still time to secure your spot. Visit bostonbruins.com slash tickets to uh, lock in your seat now. Uh, right now, call or 10, 617-931-0985. Good luck, Jeff Howell. Join us at 8 as we continue here on Toucher and Hardy, brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more with FanDuel.